Hello, my name is Cesar Juvonen, and in this demonstration, we're going to concentrate on a kind of a classic scenario in the full trust code uh, time frame related on how do we store metadata or modify the metadata within a site uh, and how do we expose this editing experience, for example, for random settings and random configurations, which our web part or, or functionalities might be reading and, and change their behavior on. So this is more or less a, a scenario related on the full trust code uh, and how do we how we can achieve the same scenario using uh, a CAM approach or the SharePoint app approach. So how do we modify the, the host web to actually have the similar end user experience uh, like we did have in, in the 2010 or the full trust uh, code uh, timeframe. So we're going to use an out-of-the-box theme site uh, for demonstrating this functionality and, and what I have here, and this demo is downloadable from my blog as well, is a pretty simple uh, provider-hosted application. Uh, essentially, it's, well, in this particular case, it is running in my on-premises just as well. The code itself is actually uh, completely fully functional in the Office 365 as well. So um, don't uh, concentrate on the fact that I'm actually running this in my on-prem environment. That's just because I've invested on my on-premises environment. I, I'm still going to keep that for a while and moving then to the, the cloud-based uh, deployments. But as mentioned, just as well, the code will work in Office 365. And what we have here is essentially classic provider-hosted application. Uh, which has been built uh, to demonstrate uh, the site metadata or well, to demonstrate a specific scenario which we have uh, classically implemented using application pages and uh, a, a custom action feature framework links uh, in the in the full trust code. So let's actually have a look on the on the functionality first. So I'm going to deploy the application uh, to the site just to double check that I had to have the latest version of the application available, and then we can actually have a look on how the application behaves and what does it actually do. So the application gets deployed on the site. We approve uh, the, the uh, OAuth uh, authorization for the application. And by default, like you always in, in Visual Studio, uh, when we deploy, uh, we get actually deployed uh, on the app website. So the, the app itself is pretty simple. It actually exposes two different uh, settings and completely imaginary settings. So this is the, it is requesting a project code and a project phase uh, related on the site where it has been installed. The kind of an imaginary scenario is pretty classic one where the collaboration sites are used as a project sites and every single project should be storing uh, their phase and, and some sort of a unique project code uh, from LLB system to kind of a sync back what the SharePoint site is actually having. And this app is there to actually expose or, or to provide that UI for the site collection owners to actually set up uh, that setting. Uh, let's actually go on the site, uh, and this app itself is pretty simple, but what we actually did as part of the app installation is that we added, uh, let's say, a few non-traditional links on the site. So we did use a, a this kind of a custom action pattern um, in using CSAM to add a link to that app in from our site actions menu, first of all. So within the within the site actions menu, we injected Oop, uh, let's see if we can actually get the zooming to work properly. Uh, we injected uh, the, the uh, metadata link as the final pointer in the site action menu. So if I click to that one, the modify site metadata, I get redirected to the application as well. Um, and the other, other pointer or, or let's say a kind of a non-traditional SharePoint app approach was that we actually added a, a link to the site settings as well. So if you go to the site settings, we're able to see the modify site metadata happens to be there. Well, now it's it's twice there, so it's a minor bug in the uh, bug in the code, but you get the point. Uh, so underneath the site actions uh, for the site owner, uh, the site owner can actually go and modify the site metadata. And do you the the uh, when you click that link, you will be redirected to this app, uh, and you can then update the uh, metadata for the site. And the metadata is then stored uh, within the property back of the site. So then it's up to you how do we actually uh, 
how do we actually utilize that metadata or is it just there for presentational purposes? Also included in the in the in the code example, uh, well first of all let's actually have a look on the on the code. Uh, so how do we actually make that uh, happen? Uh, so let's open up uh, our provider hosted application and first of all uh, within our I'm going to stop debugging because it's it's not actually uh, that meaningful. So within our provider hosted application, there's a few things what we're actually doing. Uh, first of all, the provider hosted application has uh, the has uh, sorry here is the provider hosted application settings, and we have that app handle app installed uh, event set to true. And that will essentially mean that uh, the Visual Studio will create us the necessary uh, service which will be called whenever the app is installed. Um, this is one way of, of applying those changes into the host web. Uh, there's multiple other ways to do that. But what, what we're trying to achieve within this demonstration is that as part of the app installation, uh, we will modify the site automatically. Uh, and when we set the handle app install to true, that will essentially make sure that our service uh, service is, is called and within our app event service. Uh, so let's actually have a look on that code. Uh, we are, uh, the execution comes here. When the app is actually installed, we get the context uh, from the token helper. Uh, this, by the way, is a pretty good, uh, well, nice method or a method which is actually working with Office 365 or on-prem. So the code is encapsulating that by default in the token helper. But what we have here is the add custom actions. Uh, and this is this part is now the custom uh, part which has been included in the demonstration. And in the add custom actions functionality, uh, we have uh, the necessary code to actually use uh, CSUM. Uh, the client side object model uh, to inject the required settings in. So traditionally in 2010, you would have used feature framework and custom action element in the in the custom uh, in the feature framework. But just as well, you can actually achieve the same end result using the CSM uh, and the user custom action uh, collection in the remote web. So the custom action in a feature framework is actually modifying that same uh, custom action. Uh, user custom action collection. And we can access that also remotely. And then it's up to just know uh, how do we actually do this. So the location marks uh, and all of these, these are the same as for the feature framework element. And you can find these unique IDs from the MSDN. Um, and then we add essentially the URL to our app uh, and the text, what we want to actually show for the end user. If you want to put something in a custom action, that's possible as well. So as long as you understand, uh, well, as long as you go to that MSDN and set uh, the location properly, uh, then it's up to the sequence to decide is it the first one or second one or which the order it is in the in the custom actions menu, and then the, to target URL to the application and modify the site metadata is the text within the application. And then it's up to the, the essentially, well, at this point, uh, the, the SharePoint app dot user custom actions is actually having that information in. So if we go to the PowerShell and let's take a, a instance, uh, so the, the web instance, get SP web and identity equals HTTP. Oop, uh, we are in the Finnish keyboard this time, so dev.contoso.com. And then we can actually see these entries whenever the, the application or SharePoint app has been installed. We're able to see those entries in a custom action, user custom action collection. So in the v.user, oh, it helps if you are able to actually write user custom actions. We're able to actually see these entries here. So we're pinpointing, or we have installed these entries uh, to the SharePoint web or the SP web object in the database, and this will be then executed as part of the site execution, and therefore uh, it will ex uh, it will essentially then modify the custom actions or site settings page. And these are not kind of a traditional thing as maybe what you are used to do with SharePoint apps, but the, the whole point is that we're able to demonstrate and, and achieve the same end result as traditionally in, in SharePoint 2010 using full trust code and app 
pages or app custom app pages in general and then how do we actually utilize this well first of all in in our pages uh, in the, the site metadata or in the default page that's this is pretty simple code uh, we are essentially getting the information from the property back or the, the current uh, current web context uh, within the current host web uh, in this particular demo, we are using this token utility, which is essentially encapsulating the access uh, or getting the client context, uh, regardless if it's Office 365 or on-prem server to server authentication. So from a development perspective, uh, this is pretty easy. In Visual Studio 2013 or 2013 preview, this is now then natively supported, but this demonstration has been created using Visual Studio 2012. Um, and in here, what we do is essentially we update the metadata uh, or those properties uh, would do the uh, property back of the particular uh, host web. So at this point, we have accessed from our property hosted application, the host web and stored some additional metadata properties uh, to the, the, the host web. And then it's up to the, let's say, functionality or the behavior, how do we actually use them? Uh, in this particular uh, scenario, uh, if we actually take the page in edit mode, so let's take the page in edit mode and let's add a, a web part or app part on the page. Uh, we essentially just uh, test, uh, let's add the, the one column on the right with the sidebar and let's add a, a one app part on the page, which is the site metadata app part, which is included in the project as well. And that's there to just show the uh, saved information related on the app. So whatever has been saved uh, on the app itself. Well, and it well in the app whatever has been saved in the property bank of the host web, because essentially this app part is just accessing uh, the property bank uh, of the of the host web. And then if we go uh, to modify of the site metadata. Uh, we're able to again go and, for example, change the, the project ID to whatever XXE2. It could be a code which is coming from LOB system. Uh, and the project place is moving on to closing. So the project is evolving and the information is saved. And then our property back, or oh, sorry, our, our site metadata is, is updated on the, on the site as well. Obviously, that the functionality which is dependent on the property back entry might be pretty pretty uh, much, much more significant. But the key point here is that we are able to also achieve this custom site actions uh, and, and for example, the site setting links if we want, uh, and if, if it's required as part of this full trust code to, to come transition, uh, depending on your existing functionalities, depending what has been done. And all of the code, uh, all of the code is, is definitely, well, that's available uh, from my blog post. So feel free to download that and use it any way you want uh, as an example, a reference implementation. Thanks for your time.